It's hard to believe what can happen in 25 years. At the turn of the century, the only astronauts were through government programs. Space tourism was rare. And it wasn't until 2004 that President George W. Bush signed off on a law to put more focus on the commercial space program. The decade began with the loss of the Space Shuttle Columbia in 2003, and it took a few years until the program was fully back on track. Expeditions also continued for uncrewed missions to explore other planets, including the first Mars Exploration Rover in 2004. The Space Shuttle era concluded in 2011, and the U.S. had to rely on Russia to provide rides for NASA astronauts to and from the International Space Station. Commercial space travel became front and center with NASA contracts awarded to build space taxis in 2014, with SpaceX at the forefront as the first private spaceflight company to send humans back into orbit in 2020 in its commercial crew spacecraft. Since then, new missions continue to arise, including both private and government-funded space travel for both astronauts and cargo to the ISS, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Dennis Tito kicked off the term space tourist as the first to head to the ISS in 2001 on his own dime. That was just the beginning of the crave to get into space. The desire to reach the stars made headlines in the last decade. Aerospace companies such as Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, and SpaceX sold seats on missions to spend time in zero gravity. And in addition to more suborbital and orbital trips, Plans are underway for space hotels, a spacewalk, even balloon rides in style. The International Space Station is getting old, floating since 1998 and retiring at the end of 2030. NASA has awarded hundreds of millions of dollars to fund private companies for new models, and the quest is on to get the world's first private space station in orbit. Axiom Space plans to build its orbital outpost off of the ISS and dock its first module by 2026. VAST also has its hat in the ring to launch its first private space station in 2025. There are also private company teams working to build low Earth orbit projects, Orbital Reef and Starlab, with goals to be operational later this decade. Artificial intelligence is everywhere. And it's especially transforming space travel. Humans can only do so much while in orbit, and AI is helping fill in the gaps. It's been used to help with a variety of things, including navigation and operation systems, servicing, medical assistance, and identifying what's happening outside the spacecraft. On the ground, AI has also been used in developing and building designs for satellites, rockets, and spacecraft, and can play an important role in all the calculations. Speaking of other worlds, how about UFOs? They are still a hot topic, both for the government and the public. In March, the Pentagon UFO office found, quote, no empirical evidence, unquote, for alien technology, causing quite the conversation. This isn't the first study and certainly won't be the last. There have been about 98,000 reports and growing over 20 years, cataloged by the National UFO Research Center. And the next 25 years, with the commercial space sector soaring and teaming up with other agencies from around the world, the progress will be substantial. Human expeditions will return to the moon and eventually Mars. Low Earth orbit will be packed with satellites, orbital outposts, space planes, and other spacecraft. There will even be more benefits to Earth from medical and scientific research. And, of course, the thought of vacations to space, or as a bucket list item, will be more of a reality than ever before. Space is no longer science fiction. This is just the beginning, and we are just getting started. For Space.com, I'm Meredith Garfalo.